Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Fusion Charts, a JavaScript library which allows you to create interactive charts for web, mobile, and enterprise applications. Fusion Charts can be easily integrated into your choice of front end or back end frameworks or languages. I really enjoy using Fusion Charts in my tutorials and projects since it works across platforms and browsers, and I can customize the charts to my specific requirements using the appropriate colors, themes, annotations and many other cool features. To learn how you can use Fusion Charts in your next project, head on over to FusionCharts.com. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today we're going to cover more complex reduce method examples. One where we count cart totals, and another one where we sum up languages from GitHub repos. In both cases, we're going to be returning a object from reduce, unlike our first basic video, where we looked at the number example. And just to give you a taste of where that would come in handy, I also pulled up two projects where we implement that functionality. So the first one, the cart one is going to be from my react projects video where we built a cart using use reduce hook. And notice how as we're clicking on the amount, we're also changing how many items we have in a cart. So the total is displayed in navbar, and also well, what is the total cost. So of course, we're not going to implement the dynamic functionality. However, when we count the cart values, we will be getting both things. We'll be getting the amount how much we have in a cart as well as the total. And this is exactly how we implemented it in the project. Of course, the difference is that we added some more features in the UI. But the general idea is exactly the same. Where we have the cart, where we have some items with some specific amount of items in a cart. And then as we're changing those values, we're calculating the cart total. And the second thing is the amount of items in the cart. And the second one I'll show you once we get there. So I'm going to navigate back to my star. I'm looking for cart example, and then the GitHub repo will do a little bit later. So I prepared an array for you. Like I said, it's not going to be dynamic. It's going to be static. However, the idea is exactly the same. Where I would want to use a reduce to get the total amount of items that I have in the cart. And what would be the cart total? So notice I have cart array. Each item is an object. So in the object, I have title, I have the price. So how much the item costs, and then the amount. So how many items of this specific product I have in the cart. And at this point, I have four of them. So I think I'm in good shape to set up my reduce function. So I'll collapse this one, just so I can save a little bit on real estate. And now let's come up with a variable. Now I'm going to go with let and you'll see why I'm doing that. And I'm going to call this total. And that will be equal to cart and then reduce, correct? Our function. And then remember, from reduce, we could return whatever we would want. So I set up my callback function, which is going to be called against every item in my array and what I would want to return. And in this case, I would want to return an object. So not a number, but I'm returning an object. That's why I add comma. And then I set up here my object. So this is what I'm going to be returning. And then if I want to see what is going to be the result, well, first, I would want to set up my both parameters. And remember, those parameters, we can call them taco and burrito. But in this case, I would probably want to go with total. And then the second one will be cart and then item. And then remember, when we work with reduce, we always, 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 always need to return that total. Otherwise, our functionality will go bananas. So we're going to say return and then total. And if I want to console log, just to double check, what is my total? It should be an object. Now, why is that an object? Well, because I'm returning an object. So if I'll say here zero, then of course, I'm returning a number. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the object. And more specifically, not only I would want to return an object, I would want to return an object with two properties, total items. So that is going to give me, well, what? are the total number of items in my cart. 
for all the products. And then the second thing is, of course, the cart total. So we go with cart and then total. Now, by default, both of them will be zero. But once we save, and at the moment it says, well, total items is not defined. Of course, that is because I messed up here. It's not equal. It should be a colon. And now, of course, not only I'm returning an object, I'm returning object with two specific properties because I set them up over here in my return. And this is where the magic happens. Now, what I would want is to, of course, grab that cart item. Now, if you want to console log, you can definitely do it. But I'm just telling you that essentially that will represent every item in my array. So as I'm iterating, this cart item reflects every object that is in my array. And what am I looking for here? Well, I would want to grab both of these properties. I would want to grab price and I would want to grab amount because, of course, I would want to do a little bit of calculation. So instead of console logging the cart item, which again is just that object in the array for every iteration, I'm going to destructure two things. I'm going to be looking for amount and then the price. Now, both of them come from cart item, correct? And then the amount is going to be the easiest one. Where at the moment I have total items is equal to zero. But in each iteration, I would want to add that amount to that total items. So whatever my amount is, in one case, it's going to be one, then it's two, four, and three. So I would want to sum them up. And I have already amount and I have the total items. So here's what I could do. I could say, first of all, that we're going to have some kind of comment. We're going to go with count items, and that one will be equal to total, then dot, and then the property name is total items. And we're going to go with plus equals amount. So every iteration, we're going to grab the amount property from the card item, and then we'll add it up to the total items, which at the beginning is zero, but then in each iteration, we're going to add. So notice now where I'm console logging the total. Now, of course, total item is equal to 10. Beautiful. Now, of course, the same thing now we need to do with cart total. But in this case, I would want to multiply the amount by the price because, of course, I would want to get the total value. So if I have one item or two items of that product in my cart, of course, I would want to multiply that by the actual product price because that, of course, is going to give me a money total. So in here, let's add a comma again, and we're going to go with count sum and we're going to go with different property now we'll say total and then cart total and that one is equal to plus equals and in this case we're going with amount and times price so now of course we are multiplying amount by the price and we should get correct value the problem now is going to be that once in a while we'll get these funky numbers now we have 5599 and then whatever gibberish is after the dot. And in order to avoid that, we're going to go with two fixed. Now, before we do that, though, notice we're returning an object, correct? And I can definitely see that as far as my console log. Now, why don't we right away structure it here where we have the total? I know I'm returning the object, correct? I know the property names. So instead of total, by the way, I'll comment this out just so we have it for reference. But Instead, what we could do is say total items. So again, we're just the structuring and then cart total. And of course, what you'll notice is if I go with console log and then total items, total items, and then cart, cart total, then of course, these values are still the same. We have total items equal to 10 and then 5,600. Now, here's the deal. If I would want to fix these funky numbers, the only thing I would need to do is just go with two fixed. So in this case, I'm going to go with cart total. That's why I went with let because I'll override that value. And we're just going to go with cart total two fixed. Or essentially, we say, you know what? After the dot, we'll have two numbers. Now, the problem here is that notice how two fixed returns a string. 
And there's going to be the cases where it doesn't matter. And there's going to be cases where it's not the scenario that you're looking for. So essentially, you would want this to be a number. And now you have the string. How we can fix that? Well, simple. We can just go with parse and then float. And of course, it will pass in this value. And what you'll notice right now that again, we have 10 total items and total sum. Again, we use it in a project where, of course, this is happening dynamically. Every time we click on one of the buttons, whether we are removing the items, whether we're increasing or decreasing the amount, but the general functionality is exactly the same. Where we always have some kind of cart, and then we use the reduce function to calculate those values. So now, of course, let's go to our second project. And if you want to see the functionality, it is going to be in our search GitHub users project, again, which we built with React. Where essentially, we're just looking at our repos. And for example, in this case, we're counting how many repos were done with CSS, how many with HTML, and how many with JavaScript, or essentially what languages are we using. And again, in our case, we'll just hit the URL, we'll get the values back, and then we'll set up our data. But eventually, you might, if you work on a project, you might even display that data as well. In our case, we're just dealing with functionality. So let's go back to our project. Now I already provided the URL, and it would be the root endpoint api.github.com. And then you're looking for users, and then John Smilga, or whatever user you would want to type in, then repos. And then since I would want to make it a bit more interesting, I added this URL parameter of per underscore page and then 100, which just means that we're going to get 100 repos. So of course, if you want to check out what is going to be response, just navigate to the browser, pass it in, and you'll be in good shape where you have this array. And then of course, each object represents that repo. And what we would want to count is this property of language. So keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling. And eventually you'll hit the property by the name of language, which now I'll have problem finding that property, but I know it should be there. So we have description, we have this, 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 this. And for some reason, I don't see Oh, there it is. So now we have the language, that's the property we're looking for. And essentially, we're just going to count how many repos have this property of language equal to JavaScript, or equal to HTML, or whatever languages the user has. So let's navigate back to our project. And I'll use async await and fetch API. But of course, it's up to you if you want to use a different setup. So in my case, what I'm going to do, well, I will set up my fetch. And I would want to set it up in the async await. So we'll go with a fetch, and then a repos, that's my function. Like I said, I'm going to set this up as async await. And then in here, what I would want is to call this function, we'll say, fetch repos. And then since I have async, of course, I can just wait for my response. And we're going to go with response is equal to fetch, fetch API, and then we'll pass in the URL. Now, of course, I would also want to add a wait over here. And then we know that this returns a promise. But of course, I would want JSON. So we're going to go with const and then data. And that also returns a promise. So again, we go with a wait, and we have response, and then dot JSON. So if we console log the data, we should have under repos. And of course, there is now we have so the same thing. Now I'd want to iterate over that data and then return object with the count of those languages. So eventually, let's imagine the scenario where I would want to display. Well, how many repos have CSS, HTML, or JavaScript, or whatever language the user is using? So in this case, why don't we do a following thing where I'm going to change this around? It's going to be called new data, const new data. Then I'll set it equal to data and then reduce. And then again, we have our callback function. And what are we returning? Well, again, I would want to return a object. In this case, however, it's going to be empty object. Then 
we would want to set up two parameters total and then repo. So the second parameter represents each object in that array. And as always, we want to return a total. That is a must. And then in here, why don't we right away console log new data? So that is going to be our setup. So now, of course, once I do that, it is just an empty object. That is what we're returning from the repo. And then, like I said, the property that I'm looking for in each repo is a language. So we go with const and then a language. And that one is structured from the repo. And now what I would want in this new object that I'm returning, I would want to check, hey, listen, is the property of language already there? If it is, beautiful, just add one. So plus one. If it's not there, create a new one. So first, I'll write it the long way. And then, of course, we will refactor it together where I'm going to say if total. So that is my object. If it has a language already on there. And notice here how we're using these dynamic object properties. And that essentially was one of the videos that we worked on previously in JavaScript Nuggets. So if you need to go back, please do so because I'm not going to cover it one more time. And then we go with total again, then language. And if the language is already there, what I would want is to just add one. So whatever value I have currently, plus one. So in here, I'm just going to say plus one. However, if this object that I'm getting back does not have that property, then of course, I would want to create it. So here we're going to go with else and then total. And then of course, we go with language and then equals to one. We save it and we should have an object with properties. We have JavaScript. So I have 38 repos that have the value for that property of JavaScript, then 45 with CSS, and then 14 HTML. Now, some of them are null. So we probably would want to fix that. And we're just going to say, you know what, if the language property has some kind of value, then I would want to do all that. If it doesn't, then just return nothing. So in this case, notice now we got rid of the null. And we can also refactor this so we don't have that many lines of code. So comment this out for your reference. And we'll do the same thing if language exists. And then we can just go with one liner where we say total language. And we can use the or operator where we go with total language, language plus one, which again, just means if the property is already on the object, beautiful, then just add one. However, if it is not a case, just return a one. Why this is possible? Well, because in here, if I'm going to get undefined and then plus one, of course, it's not going to be true. So it will always evaluate to this one. However, if the property is already on the object, then of course, there's going to be a value and that value will be returned. So again, I can save and notice how our functionality works. We have 100 repos. And then in this case, we just count how many repos have the JavaScript value, how many CSS and how many HTML. So that's how we can return a object from reduce and do some more interesting stuff in our callback function. And you can also see that it is not just theory, we can definitely implement it when we build our apps.